Well, welcome everyone to the Really W7 podcast. I'm Tom Pickup, and we're here for this special interview with Ierko Bachenko, as you can see here, who appeared... Hello, the... Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you, Ierko. Um, and she's coming all the way from Dubai this morning, so great to have you. Now, Ierka appeared as a Bond girl, one of Drax's beauties, in one of our favourite films. And um, Sam here, Sam Rogers is with me. It's one of our favourite films. It's one of his favourite films. It's Moonraker. So we're, we're, we're so excited to be talking about that film in particular. <laughs> but, you know, this is my favourite also, so that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good choice, Ierka. <laughs> Now, coming back to our podcast, you can catch all our interviews and other episodes uh, on iTunes and Spotify, and we've also got a YouTube channel now, so please subscribe and leave a nice review. We're also on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, so please uh, add, you, add us onto your lists, and you'll, apply, you'll find plenty of silly interactions between Bond fans from all over the world, and we look forward to, to welcome you to that weird experience. <laughs> anyway... Let's get back to the main thing. We've got Erka here, and yes, we we can't believe we're chatting to a real life Bond girl. So, so welcome, welcome to, <laughs> to Bond fans from the UK. Moonraker at the moment is having a real renaissance, and it's it's one of the most loved Bond films there is, Erka. So we're so glad to have you. Yeah, I'm very glad to be with you this uh, this morning. I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Erka, she of course has had a colourful career in many different things. She was a model to start with. She then went on to do acting. And then, of course, she's, she's gone into the world of pop music, where she's not only performed as a pop musician, but she's written for many other acts. So we, we've got lots to talk about. But, of course, we know her best for her memorable part as one of Drax's alluring women in Moonraker. So, yes. <laughs> so you, you've, got, you've got a very interesting background, Erka. You, you were born in Poland, is that right? Yes, I was born in Poland and I arrived in I arrived, you know, yes, with my parents, we, met, we moved to, to Paris uh, when I was six years old. But I must say that my dad was born in France, in, in Paris, and when he was uh, 20, he just moved to Poland and then he met my mom and everything. So, And he knew that he would never stay in Poland more than a few years. So. Uh, yeah, we we moved there when I was six, with my also with my three brothers. Right. Okay. What was it like growing up in Paris? You know, uh, yes, I was six. Uh, in uh, it was it was amazing because Paris at that time is it has changed a lot. But at that time, it was the most beautiful city in the world, and so everyone was dreaming to to go to Paris and. Uh, uh, so uh, I didn't, I couldn't speak French, but I just uh, uh, was saying all the time, I'm, I'm Parisian, Parisian, it means from Paris, I'm Parisian, Parisian. It was very funny, I, I think, yeah. But it was very great to, to be in Paris. It was wonderful. Right. And the first thing you did was you, you broke into the modeling world. Is that right? Yes. You know, when I was 13, my dad showed me a magazine and he said, you know, you should... Uh, send the, your picture there it was for this a beauty contest and um, so i was lucky and so i went to the final and then um i must say that a very famous singer got in touch with me and he he, he was a boss of a big agency model agency but i was very young so I, um when he contacted me uh, i said that i was 16 but it wasn't true i was 14 so when i arrived to the agency uh, the, the manager of the agency looked at me and said, but you're not 16, come on, come, come back in two years. So, but she, she, she saw that I was so sad, so she kept me in this agency. So I started as a model when I was 14, with, uh, in agent, Girls Models. It, the, the name of the agency was Girls Model. I mean, that, that's... that's no, go on, Sam. Go on. No, I was going to say, she must have seen such potential as well if she said, oh, well, actually, no, we'll keep you on, even though you should be back in two years, like, oh, you can start now. Uh, yeah, you know, um, the thing, I was very fun of the, 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 the this famous uh, artist, this famous singers also. So I was, um, 
you know, I, I was very excited to, 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 to be in this agency and to, and to get in touch with him because I was very fond of him. And I think that he gave me the, uh, you know, the, the, the love of music and the, to be on stage. Yeah. So what, what were the first few modeling jobs you did? That, that must have been exciting. The very first job, it was uh, amazing because uh, it was not, yeah, uh, in the beginning, I did a lot of photo shoot for, you know, for uh, to see how it goes and everything. And I was, I, I went to school at the same time. So uh, it wasn't very easy. But uh, the very first job, I was 15 and a half. It was for Vogue magazine and with Helmut Newton. Uh, it, it was just uh, fantastic, fantastic, really, because uh, uh, it was he was the very one of the best photographer in the world at that time uh, Helmut Newton and of course Vogue magazine was the best magazine as well so how many shoots uh, photo shoots did you do uh, um, we you know at that time the, the the camera wasn't the same as today so we had to shoot a, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and uh, a lot of uh, photos to get one. But we did already, we had to shoot already, I don't know, uh, maybe one, 800 photos. And we choose, he ch they choose the four photos for this magazine, for four photos. And that must have taken you, did that take you around the world, your modeling? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, then I went to, to also to New York. I was uh, with Eileen Ford. And then I went also to Tokyo and to Milano. I, 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 yeah, to Milano also. I was in the very big agency in Milano. So really, you, you were living the life of a Bond girl from an early age. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's why, you know, when uh, some, some people are, are asking me that, how was it uh, when... Uh, uh, to to be in one record, I was used already to these beautiful things, you know, to to travel. To uh, I was used to uh, beautiful makeup, beautiful dresses, and so I was used already. So uh, it wasn't very new for me to um, that kind of thing. So when I went when I was um, uh, played in one record, you understand what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 Because you're so young at this stage and you have the modeling, you have the, the singing and then the acting. So what came next after the modeling? You know, but what, what was very strange, it was that uh, I didn't want to be in this, in this part of, uh, you know, of business. I wanted to be an astronomer. Oh, wow. So okay, wow. It's completely different, you know, when I was 9, 10, 11, I didn't... I didn't even think about to be a model or whatever. Uh, yeah, I wanted to be astronomer. So, but what is funny is when uh, Margot Capelier, you know, the caster, director caster, she, she um, got in touch with me for this role. Uh, I didn't want to do it because uh, for me, um, you know, I wanted the first role. I wanted to, the role, the Lois Child's role, but I was right, yeah. too young. Yeah. And she told me, she told me, no, you're too young. You cannot, you never, you cannot. So this role would be fantastic for you. So, um, and when she explained me the film, the story of the film, so I, 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 she convinced me. So I accepted, you know, to play in because Moonraker, it was funny, you know, because I wanted to be astronomer. So maybe I was thinking it's maybe a sign somewhere. So I, uh, yeah, I did it. So, but I have no regret at all. No, I mean, so, so who did you first meet from the Bond world? Who did you first meet? I met, uh, so Margot Capelli, then uh, the production, uh, I met um, uh, Kirby Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, wow. With uh, Lewis Gilbert, and, uh, but it was in Paris. So um, yeah, I met, I don't remember the very first time who I met. I know that it was Margot Capelli, but then, uh, yeah, I think it was Broccoli, yeah, could be. I mean, did, did you realize who these people were? Because they're, they're massive people in the world of film, aren't they? You know, the thing is that um, at that time, uh, of course, 
uh, James Bond was very famous, but not like nowadays, you know, not, not like today. Uh, so I think nobody really realized at that time how, how big it could be, how he would be. And uh, uh, I, know, I know that when uh, at that age, I, I had a lot of friends, uh, men, uh, boy, boys, they really were fun, very fun. And I didn't understand that <laughs> at that time. But, you know, I, uh, yeah, as I said, um, it wasn't that famous that, well, as it is today, you know, so. <laughs> it was probably better that you didn't know them because you yeah. were unfazed. You... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I, I mean, we, the, we hear people and actors from the Bond franchise say how, how friendly Cubby Broccoli was and how friendly everyone was like um, Lewis Gilbert as well. Were they, were they lovely people to, to meet? They were really fantastic, you know. Um, uh, I, I just, uh, you know, yeah, they were, they were really fantastic. Uh, Lewis Gilbert, um, Broccoli, uh, all the team was so nice, so friendly. And um, I like a lot Kirby. And, there is one thing I remember with Kirby. I was with him in Venice because uh, I went, you know, I already went to Brazil, to Argentina, to Guatemala, and to Venice. And when we 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 had a cup of tea together, and and he just told me, you know, Irka, you are you are different from the others. You have something special. I suggest you to come to England for drama classes, and so. But it never happened because I was very young and I didn't realize, um, you know, that uh, it was how important it could be at that time. So, uh, but sometimes I wonder if I had been to London, what would have happened with my career and with me, with myself. So I don't know. So this is so. Yeah, there were so great, fantastic people. Uh, Roger was simply amazing. We, I, we adore him yeah, uh, as Bond because you know he was exactly in his life his simplicity was amazing it seems to me that Roger never played a character he just played himself all yeah. the time he was joking laughing all the time a lot of sense of humor and he was a very friendly person and I think this kind of actors as I say always doesn't exist anymore so you know it was really a pleasure to work with him and with all the team. Yeah. That's amazing. Go on, Sam. You please ask something no, no. about Roger. I think. <laughs> no, I mean, Roger's such a larger than life character um, and you can really see it on screen. Um, and I just wonder, I've heard, you know, that he, he had been a bit of a joker as well. Is there anything memorable that he did on, on sets or behind the scenes that we just as fans wouldn't know about? Now, the thing is, when uh, he, he was so friendly and he was everywhere, you know, when uh, we were shooting, he was, he, he was going everywhere, talking to everybody. And um, uh, when I also was in Venice, I remember that um, he was in the, you know, the boat, uh, how do you call it? Um, pira, pira, uh, no, pira, gondola. Uh, gondola. <laughs> gondola, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was uh, shooting, you know, pictures of him and uh, in in a place, some up place. And, and he just stopped in front of me and he said, come on, let's do pictures together. And I just said, no, I was so shy because I was really shy. And, and uh, so he did come, come with me. And we asked somebody to make, to shoot pictures of us. And, and I said, no, no, no. So uh, I, uh, I continue uh, to shoot pictures of him. And so I, I found this, uh, you know, this moment very um, amazing because uh, he was, he was so nice. He was, I, I don't know, I have no words, you know, because he was really uh, uh, so simple. I, and I really learned a lot of him because um, from him, uh, you know, it, um, the simplicity, the, uh, yeah, I think we, we are coming from 
all we are coming from the same place we are going to the same place so the simplicity i think it's the you know it's the it's very important and he he had he was like this he was very simple he was very kind so i can see some you, you've got a picture of roger moore there yes the and nobody, well, nobody, can you show yeah, us that some <laughs> oh, so. Uh, oh. <laughs> so i so i realized i had a bunch of um postcards in a in a box that i had been given about 10 years ago and i've i've always just kind of had them to the side and i've never since i started becoming writing about bond and doing a bit more with bond i'd never thought oh i'll get these out so yesterday i, I just saw them <laughs> on on the side and i thought oh let's see what which moonraker ones are in here and I was kind of hoping that there was going to be a promotional picture of all all the Drax women, including Urka, but unfortunately <laughs> there wasn't. But I did have um, these that are behind me, so I thought I would show them off. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So going back to uh, Roger, you, you obviously you've done singing as well, but you you actually recorded a duet with him. Is that right? Yes, because. Uh... You know, I, I, when I became a songwriter and a, a singer, you know, I just um, forget my Irka Boshenko. I just have to change my name. Yeah. I, I win both, so I cut Boshenko to Bo, and uh, Irka, it is uh, Irene, without the yes. e, so Irene Bo. Because we, you know, when you in France, when you're a James Bond girl, you don't know how to write, you don't know how to sing, you're just nothing. So you cannot do anything. So I decided to change my name, and then I started, you know. So I forgot James Bond. I forgot this part of my life because I have I had something new to do to, and um, and then. Many years later, I received a kind of message, you know, uh, email, are you Irka Boshenko? As I said, come on, uh, maybe I have to answer. <laughs> no, because uh, if you are Irka Boshenko, uh, you have to know that we, you are invited in London for, um, uh, you know, to, to sign autographs, autographica. Yes, yes, yeah. And uh, so, in the beginning, I thought it was a joke, so, but I know, and I answered. So I was invited there. And then uh, I went there, it was amazing. I saw, it was just a family, you know? Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, James Bond is like a family. The yeah. fans and the actors are all together. For me, it's, it's the same, you know, it's like a big family. And uh, I was really, really surprised of this. And then I met some other drugs girls like Catherine Serre, uh, Beatrice, uh, Shishinu. So, uh, and I was, it was for the 50th anniversary of James Bond. Yeah, yeah. And then, so I thought, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's, I have to go back in this world because I love it, you know. So I decided to write a song for the 50th anniversary. But of course I lost all the, you know, I didn't have any contact from Roger anymore because I didn't, I haven't seen him for so many years. Um, so I got in touch with um, James Bond uh, in France, the James Bond uh, fans. Yeah. yeah. Club, James Bond Club. And they gave me the contact of uh, uh, Owen, uh, yeah, his yeah. agent. Yeah, yeah. So I sent a message. The same day, one hour later, Roger uh, <laughs> answered me, of course, uh, I will do this duet with you. So it was uh, just uh, like a dream coming true, you know? It, and uh, so it was really fantastic. So I went, uh, I went to record the song. So I first, of course, uh, wrote the song and uh, everything and then uh, we met in switzerland and oh. i recorded his voice in uh, in uh, switzerland with oh. his, his wife was there or christina also and so it was it was much more even much more beautiful for me 
uh, the, at that time because we were so close, you know. And when I, I just see him in the corridor when he's opening the door, I haven't seen him for so long. It was just, a, you know, like, I don't know how to explain that. I think one of the most beautiful days of, of my life. Oh. Because, um, I don't know, it was so, uh, I was feeling so, I don't know, you know, I have a, um, a tears probably in my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, because I remember it was so beautiful. And I just um, get into his arms and so, hello, hello. Because it was, it was really beautiful, beautiful. He was, really, he was really fantastic person. Was he exactly the same as he was all those years ago? <laughs> yes, he was exactly the yeah, same. Yeah. He haven't changed at all. <laughs> it was the same. <laughs> but but his wife was there, so it was a little bit different. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but no, he was really the same. Oh, so and just tell us, went, tell us about the recording the song then. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just. Oh, crying. sorry. Oh, oh no. no. I'm sorry, <laughs> because it was. This, so, is, so this is the effect Roger has on us. We we. <laughs> We, yeah. It's so sad though because we all remember where we were when when he we heard that he died as well and it it brings yeah. back those those memories doesn't it? Yeah, it was oh yeah, life that's life. Yeah, yeah. And um, so when the recording, you know, uh, he just was looking at me and he said, "So I had the microphone and the technical, you know, material." And he said, so what, what to do? What, what do I have to say? What? So I said, listen to the song many times. And then I take you, to, you take the microphone and you say what you want. <laughs> and so he listened to the song once, twice, and then he started to, to, to talk. And <laughs> a little bit because this, the song uh, was called, is called Happy Birthday, Mr. Bonzo. Then he started to to sing happy birthday with this beautiful voice. <laughs> yeah. Birthday. It was really, very, very fantastic. It was really great, yeah. Oh, my so, word. Yeah, it was really fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, it was really, as I said, one of, one of the most beautiful days of my life because uh, so intense, you know, so... I guess it's a mix of a lot of different things. You've got all this, this joy of seeing someone that you've not seen for a long time. There's, I would presume, some nostalgia as well for seeing something taking you back to a place so long ago in your career and then just meeting for such a joyous moment. And it's just, it just sounds like a really beautiful time. Yeah, it was beautiful. And then we went, we went uh, for, uh, we, having, we, we had lunch downstairs and it was funny because of course, Everybody was looking at him, and he was just—he uh, was just, uh, you know—and uh, he was saying hello to everyone. And and then we 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 sat and we we talked a lot about um, the past, of course, about Moonraker, about all the team. And he was, yeah, he really liked this moment. This, you know, that that time he he remembered, and they, yeah, and we had and the thing very funny we talked about Helmut Newton and he he was their friend he, his friend also at that time and I didn't know and I just told him of course I I started my career as a model with Helmut Newton and you talked to me about Helmut Newton so many years later it's it yeah. was really you know it's uh, yeah oh lovely and he lived in Switzerland didn't he yes he was in Switzerland and in, also in Monaco yeah oh lovely yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Well, that I mean, that's that brings us on to your singing, actually, because, like you said, you 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 were called Irene Bo when you were singing. Yeah. What, what sort of songs did you perform early on then in your career? Uh, you know, I I like every kind of music, so uh, I'm I think I'm able to 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 perform many you know many styles. Yeah. But of course, pop pop music uh, for me, it's yeah. Pop music. I, li I like sometimes some jazz also. Um, I like rap. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> many different. You know, I'm very inspired by rap. You know, because they have so beautiful lyrics. Yeah. So I'm very inspired by it. Uh, and everybody's really uh, surprised when I say that. But yeah, <laughs> I am. So yeah, very yeah, a lot of. Uh, different different uh, kind of music uh, uh, yeah 
And who who inspired you growing up? Which artists inspired you? Uh, oh, I, I, I loved Elton, uh, Elton John. Yes. Uh, mm. <laughs> Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, only for the moment. Oh, yeah, I, of course, when I was a uh, kid, I loved uh, Barbara, Barbara Streisand, but then, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like a lot of a lot of uh, style, a lot of artists, but mostly, uh, of course, Elton John and Freddie Mercury. Oh. Well, for me, Elton John is just the best. Yeah, I, I won't disagree with you. We we love Elton John as well. <laughs> yeah, oh, so but I knew that I saw that you know Tina Arena because I'm well, your... yeah, I, you'd had you written some some songs for her? Is that right? Yes, of course. Yes, I've written some. Amazing! Songs. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. How did that start? How did you come to write for for Tina? But just one question: Do do because in uh, is she famous in? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she. Because, yeah, she. She's Australian, isn't she? Yeah, she's Australian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but I didn't know because sometimes uh, very famous. Uh, there are very famous artists uh, in France, but they are not, uh, they yeah. are unknown, you know, in other countries. So um, just, I was just surprised that you knew her. Yeah, oh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was, it was a good meet, yeah, it was uh, fantastic to meet her because uh, she had a beautiful voice and of course, uh, she, it, it was, it was really great to work with her. Yeah, I met her many times. Uh, uh, because um, yeah, I wanted to be as close as possible to you know to 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 to, to, to write lyrics really for her. So it uh, to, I really had to, to be close to her. So uh, yeah, it was really fi fine and uh, beautiful to work with her. Yeah. So do, do you prefer writing or singing? Uh, it, it's funny because I love both. You know, sometimes. It depends on my inspiration. Sometimes I love to be, to write, you know, to be all alone in, in somewhere with no one. And I'm just in another world and I write and, you know, inspiration and I write and write. Um, but I like also to be on stage because of course, to share my feelings, to share um, things with uh, public. And yeah. so I love it. So it's really, I like to, both at the same level you know uh, but it's so different but i love i love to both and i think it's uh, one help the other yes yeah hmm. oh, because when i'm on stage i can see uh what people like what public likes uh, you know what what they like what they love yeah. what the words they, they want to hear so it helps me to, for, for for writing yeah and yeah, so it's. Uh, I hope I, that I, uh, I understand what I mean because that was my my English. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, but I, I guess you you respect the writing process after if you've just been a performer, you can respect all the effort that goes into writing once you actually get down to it yourself and then to see what you've written then be performed either by yourself or by someone else is also yeah. must be very happy that the work that you've put in. Yes, has made sure. It. Yes, I remember the first, uh, because I, I worked with uh, many um, publishing company with uh, EMI at that time and Sony Publishing in France. And of course they uh, get me in touch with uh, a lot of artists. And uh, in the beginning, you know, I wrote a song and then I saw the, it was for, at that time, it, you know, very, uh, um, how do you say, five girls were singing in France and they were very famous. So I worked, uh, I wrote a song for them. And when I first time saw in the TV, the video clip, and everything, it was just, you know, it was fantastic also. It wasn't me, but it was as, as fantastic as it if would have been me. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, hmm. it, was, it was me, or, yeah. So yeah, it was uh, amazing. It's, it's very beautiful uh, feeling, yeah. I mean, I just have to say, though, that I, I listened to some of your music last night and I feel like I'm going to butcher some of, some, some of the song names, but um, Dissert comme le paradis. 
Um, Shelly, this is not me, and un de toi, jira au bois, I think is how you say <laughs> it. I, those are what I've got written down because I thought they were excellent and I had them on repeat. <laughs> so, um, no, and I'm looking forward to listening to more as well. And you know, the, the thing is that uh, because here in Dubai, everybody speaks English. So, um, I write now, I'm, I, I decided to write songs in English. So, uh, even un de trois jira au bois. It means it's uh, yeah. I wrote it in English. We wrote the li English lyrics and un deux trois normal blah blah. Cat <laughs> sign is just pleasure and bliss. Un deux trois make up my bra, baby. <laughs> devil, I miss you know something very funny, very funny. So yeah, I we I decided to write <laughs> all my songs in 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 English also. And um, yesterday I, we worked on a, a special song also called. Uh, tu seras un homme mon fils, uh, you, you'll be a man, my son. I know Kipling wrote a poem a long time ago, but uh, it's completely yeah. different. So, uh, you know, for me, uh, yeah, um, yeah, so I'm writing the song in English now, also. Uh, maybe I, uh, I would send it to you once. There you oh, go, so. I was going to say there was another weird um, kind of like coincidence um, when when preparing for, for this interview because um, when looking at what you had done I'd saw that I'd seen that your first film credit for was for Bilitis in 1977 yeah. and I've had one of the pieces of music from that film on my Spotify for for a number of years and I had no idea that it was from a film um, and I just thought that piece was beautiful and then to find out yeah. that you had been in that film um, I think as, as the character Prudence, and then I actually, I did watch some clips from the film as well in preparation. And it's just funny to, to see how you've kind of traversed different things and you've gone from yeah. kind of like a French cinema background to go into this internationally renowned film um, and then go on to establish this writing and singing career. Um, it's just excellent to kind of see the trajectory that, Although maybe you didn't go to drama school like that, you've still managed to to mm. do something with your life, and you're you're at a place that you are very happy and comfortable with, and that you oh, continue. Was, I think it's called uh, freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I, I have to say another thing. Is that right? You you've done you've been involved with Eurovision. Yes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Amazing again. <laughs> Uh, but just uh, as a songwriter, uh, no, yeah, no, we, we we talk only about this because I have so many, I've done so many things, but uh, yeah, <laughs> no, it's uh, fine. <laughs> you know, I worked uh, with a famous, uh, quite famous uh, artist, French artist, and uh, I wrote a lot of songs for her. And then someone uh, wanted her to 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 be in a Eurovision contest, and so uh, he he just asked me to to. To write, to write some lyrics for that, so I did it, and yes, she, we 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 were to uh, Greece for the Eurovision contest with this song called Coco Dance, and uh, yeah. this was song by Severin Ferrer, Severin Ferrer, a French artist. Yeah, it was. Uh, and she sent me already, um, you know, because the Eurovision was a few days ago. Yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. So we watched it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we, I watched it from here. But it's amazing because I, I think that there are so many talents now. Yeah. It's amazing. And the uh, one who won, uh, for, what is his name? Uh, uh, the, from the uh, Sam. public. Yeah. He was Sam, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and, yes, no, the, the UK from, artist. From, uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's amazing. It's like uh, Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in it's, a way, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? hey, we, and, no, but I, I really, you know, I, I really thought he would he would win because yeah, well, a, I think yeah. I think we're proud that he did so well. I mean, that's it's the best mm. we've done in what twenty years, is it, Sam? Something like that. I, I think so. <laughs> but it's, it's been it's been a long time to go from from nil to, yeah. being, <laughs> yeah. to them being second on the board. I think yeah. you can't you can't be mad at that. No, and to lose to Ukraine is is fair, isn't it? You know, it's it was a, it was a great outcome for everyone. I think. Mm. Hmm. But France, France to... didn't do very well, did they? <laughs> um... oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh, come on. Oh. It's uh, from Br Bretagne, from, you know, a part of France. Yeah. Why yeah. Don't, they don't even speak, uh, sing in French or English, but come on. <laughs> you need to write next year's yes, entry. You, do, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's a disaster. I think in France, everything <laughs> is a disaster. <laughs> so what uh, what are you up to now in Dubai? You, you're doing some performances there, aren't you? Sorry? You, you're I'm performing sorry. in Dubai now. Yes, you know, I performed already in uh, Expo 2020 yes, for yeah. the Slovenian Pavilion. So it was very, uh, yeah, because uh, I know I have a friend working in uh, Dubai municipality and he just, he just asked me, so why don't you sing a song, uh, you know, in uh, Expo? So I said, of course. So uh, because a few years ago, I wrote a song about environments. And uh, so uh, I, I sang this song there. Then I also song, yeah, performed in another place, one and only Hotel Mirage. It's a very glamorous place. Also, I, I already performed the same song called Planet Blue, La Planet Blue Planet. Because I, I'm, I'm very, you know, invested in the uh, environment and in uh, uh, women's, also women's cause, you know, men, women's cause. Right. I write a lot of songs special with this on some subject you know yeah it has true meaning you know yes. it... <laughs> a lot of truth a lot of truth in those in yeah. those songs and they're important that's great yeah which which uh do you like the bond songs the the music from the james bond films of course of course who doesn't like it yeah <laughs> good <laughs> sure it's beautiful i think it's uh, you know yeah it's i i, I must say it's a stamp it's a, the music in the james Bond movies are, are, is so important you know it's a part of the big uh, success of mm. uh, bond the music is a big part of the success of uh, this uh, film i think your song for moonraker was from shirley bassey so that's amazing isn't it and i i love that song i love it i think it's beautiful yeah, 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 that's true. It's, it was a beautiful song. I keep wanting to uh, to talk about um, your your costume in Moonraker because I adore the. I don't know what material it is it. Looks like it could be chiffon. The white gown dress that yeah. that um, that you wear that is probably most most recognized. You know, thing that you yeah. wear, and because that entire scene um, where you law Roger. <laughs> Um, into Drax's base and you know you're walking past I think mm. it's Owasu Falls um, in Brazil slash Argentina and um, it's just an absolutely gorgeous set piece and I just think you're you're made as a character to, as an actress to look as angelic and as um, beautiful as possible but you're just luring him into a trap and I absolutely just adore that and I just wondered because I think it was a um, Jacques Fonteré, who did the costuming on Moonraker, and I just wondered like how much collaboration there was, or how many fittings, or, or whatnot, went into that because the overall product, um, which we see on screen, is amazing, and that's one of my favorite scenes from the film. Yeah, but yeah, of course, the, the one, one thing we uh, uh, I regret uh, all these uh, costume or dresses disappeared. Yeah, Nobody yeah, yeah. Ever, you know, uh, so it's it's amazing. Uh, nobody knows where are all these costumes, all these um, dresses, and uh, so yeah, it was uh, yeah. So it's just sad about that. But um, but film, but how was um filming? in that particular location because I know you do a lot of walking and I was <laughs> a bit I was a bit worried because I know that you you're wearing heels and when you walk <laughs> when you're when you walk on the rocks I'm in my mind I'm like I hope she's able to wear flat shoes um <laughs> during that particular section because I really don't want her to slip and fall <laughs> you see I'm here so this is yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but but it was it was really because the team was much more smaller. So uh, we we yeah the land, land, landscape was beautiful. Uh, yeah, it was just amazing. The, the these countries were just amazing. It was waterfalls and 
natural, you know, the natural. Maybe that's, it inspired me, maybe, you know, for my songs, environmental songs, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you, you went to Venice as well. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, Venice also. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was the same. It was beautiful. Uh, everything was fine, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I also just love that when you meet Roger for the first time in the film and, you know, he's trying it on a little bit and <laughs> and you're just saying, oh, you can go anywhere you please. And then you just give him this real, like, intense glare <laughs> once he leaves and then you just know, okay, Urka's characters, there's something up there, <laughs> there's something going on. Yeah. Um, and I think because it's, it's Anne Lomberg, Lomberg's character who he sees next. And it seems like you two are kind of the ones who um, maybe call Drax or, or his people and go, okay, Bond's here, we need to get him. And that's where the whole gondola um, section appears. <laughs> and um, I just think it's just, it's it's such a, you know, it's, it's not over the top, it's not super grand, but you, you managed to do something that makes the audience think what's going to happen next and I just think you know you make the best of, of the role that you have and I really believe that you did that yeah uh, so uh, uh, I'm happy that you uh, so you, you're going very far in that kind of <laughs> detail that's uh, fantastic you know I'm just uh, it's amazing because the yeah you, every every detail you see every detail you yeah, see yeah. Every, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I have nothing else to say. You, you say ever, so beautiful things and <laughs> Well, I mean, we'll be seeing it on the Moonraker on the big screen again very soon. Yeah. Um, because it's coming uh, to UK cinemas um, in a few weeks time. So I know I've seen it on the big screen once before a few years ago and it was amazing. And I know, but Tom and the other guys from the podcast haven't and a lot of other people in the fandom haven't so I know everyone's going to be so excited to see the film on the big screen where it's where it should be viewed um I wanted to just ask as well what was um, your memory of uh, did you go to the premiere of the film and you know if so what was that experience of going to these premieres like uh yeah, yes of course the premiere in London and in Paris at both uh it's a long time ago, so I, 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 I have some pictures of it. So uh, it was, you know, we, uh, we were considered like big stars. So it was amazing because, but uh, as I said before, nobody knew at that time that it would be so amazing, so, so famous. And you, you imagine it's 60 years, 60 yeah. years of James yeah. Bond. And everybody loved James Bond all over the world. So many fans. So many, uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's just amazing, you know, when I think about it. And of course, at the premiere, it was, it was beautiful. Uh, Roger was uh, as, as ever so beautiful. So with his very smile, you know, his smile, uh, he was always smiling. He was, uh, every every girl, the drag girls were there. Also, they were very well, everybody was very happy to be in this in this uh, premiere. Yeah. What what what's it like being a Bond girl for all these years? Do do people still recognize you and want to talk to you? And you know, one thing it was very funny because um, I had I had a friend. Sometimes people recognize me. Sometimes no. But I was in uh, Los Angeles in, uh, with a ma magician. He was he's doing magic, and uh, and there is a very place, an important place for magic there. Yeah. And we went. It's we went there, and you know, uh, someone he, he was supposed to to do magic there. You know, so we were together. We went. We opened the door. We went there and someone just looked at me and kind of came to me. He was, my, my friend was supposed to be a, the star, you know, because he was supposed to do magic there. And so, and th this guy come to me and look at me and come to me and say, but you are Irka Bushenko. Moonraker. <laughs> <laughs> it was what, maybe five years ago, four years ago, you know, it was so funny because the, 
uh, I thought for, at first time that my, it was a joke also, you know, from my friend, but it wasn't. He just recognized me. I was in Hollywood. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. I was going to say, just sorry, just quickly linking to that. I know a few years ago you did, you actually met up with a lot of the uh, actresses on who from Moonraker. At, um, um, I can't remember the name of the estate, but I think it was to do with the James, the James Bond French fan club. And you all met at the estates where, uh, uh, do you remember what it's called, Tom? The um, the Drax estate. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Well, the, in the yeah. film, the Drax estate, and you all yeah. met, and you know, this this kind of it was like a Moonraker exhibition. And I guess I just wanted to ask, what was it like to kind of to have all of these French actresses because it was quite a, a French production, yeah. Moonraker. A lot of the production had moved to France for the first time, and I guess you know, I. I would hope that there was a sense of camaraderie on set and that even, you know, so many years later that you and your, you know, colleagues all met again and just enjoyed being in each other's company to just recount such a unique time in your lives. I was just wondering what was it like to, to just be around those people again? Yeah, it's, it's a kind of, it's magic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's magic because... Uh, so many years later, uh, you know, to 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 see uh, drugs girls again and to see the fans coming, uh, and so it's just magic. Oh, oh brilliant! It is amazing. Yeah, I think your your character is very mysterious. You know, you <laughs> you you and the drugs girls, they're sort of I don't know, they're sort of in, always there in the background, and you you're wondering what's going on here, and then you lead Bond to this pyramid. What, what was it like fil filming the, the scene in the pyramid? What Did you see any of Roger being attacked by the snake? <laughs> yeah, it was funny because, you know, it was with the snake, because when we saw the snake for real, it was really funny, really funny. <laughs> when you see in the movie, it's something else, you know, it, it looks real. But when you saw this in plastic, yeah. it, was really, it was amazing, really. It was really like a joke. It was funny. Yeah. And but it's difficult as well because you've got all of you, all of you girls have to look so serious and so kind of angry. Yeah. But I bet when you're when you watch it, when you're watching <laughs> someone struggle with this plastic fake snake, I bet it's difficult to keep, you know, a straight yeah. face. Yeah, no, it's true. It was uh, it was very, very very fun. And of course, Drax himself, uh, Michelle Lonsdale, he he sadly died, didn't he, quite recently? What? What was it like? What was it like to, to work with him? We were not very close because uh, we 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 were not in the same scenes, so not. And I heard later. I heard uh, that he didn't want to talk about Moonraker anymore. But uh, very st strange things happened a few years ago. I met him in the south of France, and he was so happy. We were so happy oh. to meet again. Lovely. And he just talked to me about Moonraker. So we know I was thinking that he didn't want to talk about it anymore. And we still, we, we, st we, we were there talking about Moonraker. And for him, it was a beautiful experience. He was, uh, you know, he really enjoyed to be in Moonraker to, to you know. So it, it was amazing also when we met around the swimming pool, we were talking hours about, about <laughs> this. So it was, yeah. And uh, big, big, very famous actor. He was very, yeah, very yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, massive oh, yeah. in France. Yeah, um, it's incredible. And yeah, Sam, you you watched Moonraker last night, didn't you? And you, you, yes. you noticed a couple of things. One in the credits, and then one about that that deleted scene, perhaps, isn't it? Oh yeah. So there was. I mean, I couldn't remember. You know that that your your name is so prominent in the opening credits, like it's directly alongside you know the long established you know cast like Lois Maxwell and Bernard Lee and Desmond Llewellyn, and you're right next to those names. So I first thought that was amazing that you were right up there with the rest of the you know, with with these legends essentially, which is one thing, um, and so that that was a great surprise. But then also. I know that there's this deleted scene where um, Roger's character and Lo Lois's character are walking through the space station, and and you, and yourself and uh, the other Drax girls and and the the guys are, are floating in this room. And I was just wondering, you know, 
if you knew anything about that or if you actually had to be on wires? Yeah, we have a lot of, you know, I remember um, uh, we had to, uh, th there was, th there was a, um, a teacher to, we, we had to learn how to move, how to move uh, slowly and, uh, um, but we worked a lot for, to, you know, to, to, for that, for, for, you know, um, but it was it was a, a very good experience, <laughs> I must say. Yeah, because <laughs> there are a lot of these scenes that you spend a long time on, and then they don't make the final film, which is annoying, isn't it? But it's an amazing um, the sets from Ken Adam, uh, the the magnificent sets. To was it was it nice to walk into these sets? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. It was nice. It was. Yeah. And um, we, we, before we go, I mean, we we love Moonraker now in the Bond fandom. It's it really is now getting a lot more popularity. Do you did you realize at the time though it, it would be the biggest Bond ever at the box office? I mean, that's amazing. Yes, I can see that you like Moonraker. I can yeah. see. That. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, it's funny because there are a lot of people uh, loving Moonraker and uh, some of them hating. Uh, yeah, hate. yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, 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 always at, at that time, we didn't know. We didn't know that Moonraker or whatever, uh, James Bond would be so famous. and. I'm very happy that you like Moonraker. So I'm very happy that uh, Moonraker have a lot of fans. I'm very happy yeah, yeah. for that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is now one of the most fun Bond films. I don't know, have you seen the new Bond film, Erika? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What did you think? I, 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 lo I, lo I love them, but I think that for me, um, I, I, I think that Daniel Craig is a very good, actor but for me he's not James Bond he's uh, for me huh? yeah. uh, you know he has no humor here he's not I don't know he, he, for me he's not as uh, as Roger used to be uh, as uh, Sean used to be you know so I don't know how to say of course the films are beautiful amazing and everything but uh, I, I think I prefer the the, the other ones yeah. Hmm. We'd love a new Bond film to be like Moonraker, a bit, a bit more. I don't know, a bit more fun and a bit yeah. more humorous, like that. Yeah, it, yeah. Of course, it were a lot of, yeah, much more. If we have, yeah, we could have fun to, you know, it, it was funny. It, they were yeah. funny, <laughs> you know. Today it's very, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's they are beautiful uh, anyway. No, hmm. huge anyway so yeah and the actors are excellent you know so uh, yeah yeah we're we're looking forward to finding out where bond goes next but we're so happy that we have these great films and and moonraker is is one of our favorite and it's one that people in england if they're feeling a bit down they'll watch moonraker and they'll, they'll feel happy <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> they'll cheer them up yeah <laughs> it's great fun and um that's amazing that you've you've told us all about your experiences in the film and yeah we we, we thank you so much Erica, for joining us we really appreciate it but thank you to both of you really uh, it, uh i really appreciate it also and it was nice to to meet you yeah and yeah. maybe uh, why not to meet uh, for real sometimes Yes, we we love that. Fingers crossed, and I hope this, and I hope to hear more music. I really, yes. really do because it's so good. Maybe, yeah, maybe you know. I wrote also a song called "I'm Yours," but um, oh. I wait a little bit for. I want to release it. it it's in English. Huh? It means that it's really for fans because uh, we artists are nothing without fans, and fans are wouldn't exist without artists. So it's something very. So I wrote a song about that. So uh, maybe oh. maybe when it will I will re will release this song, uh, I will send it to you before. Oh, that would be Brilliant. so good. <laughs> Thank you. 
That would be lovely. Yeah, so we look forward to hearing more of your music, Irka. And hopefully, if you're in the UK or elsewhere, we, we will meet you at a Bond event. That would be amazing. Yeah. And you'll see all the love from the, the Bond fans in the UK. They, they love Moonraker. <laughs> yeah, great. and whenever you come to Dubai, don't hesitate. Um, I will probably also, of course, for the 60th anniversary, I'm trying yeah. to organize a kind of, I wanted to do it in Paris, but in Paris, in Paris everything is dead now. So uh, I want to do it here. So um, a kind of event, uh, yeah, for the 60th anniversary. So uh, I'll let you know also about that. Oh, wow. You okay, know. right. <laughs> I'd love to go to Dubai and, and see you, and that'd be, that'd be amazing. Oh, come be. On. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate it for taking time out of your day to speak to us Bond fans. I know the Bond fans who watch this video, they'll, they'll love it. They'll, they'll, they'll love it. And thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you really much. Thank you. thank you so much. You can hear loads of our other episodes on iTunes, Spotify and our YouTube channel, where we have interviews, special episodes and reviews of all the Bond films. So simply search Really 007 Pod and you should find loads of weird and wonderful content. Remember, you're only president for life. <laughs> <laughs>